Hello and welcome to another episode of Geology Hikes with Thomas. I'm Thomas Eckert, your tour guide here. Today it's not going to be a hike, we're just going to stop off at some new rock cuts. Well, let's enjoy the view. In the back you have the Hurricane Mesa, part of the Colorado Plateau. We are standing down here in a basin on range province, Hurricane Fault, which you just see in between us, some of the Hamaka Hills here at the horizon. Now let's turn around and look at the rock cut. Just enjoy the view, the different colors, strata, tilted, horizontal. This is one side, and if you swing around to the sunny side here, Again, very colorful, beautiful exposure of rock. Well, just let's look at the cut a little bit. On top, we have a thick layer of basalt, lava. A lava flow came through here the valley a long time ago. Below, we see some sediments, coarse sediments. If you swing to the left, you have some sandy sediments, that's river deposits. And all the way in the bottom here, towards the left, you have slanted layers of very colorful rock. That's part of the Cretaceous formation. And it's tilted because it's also the southeastern flank of the virgin anticline. Altogether, we have what's called a inverted valley topography. Inverted valley because the lava on top was deposited in the valley. You had hills or mountains on either side of the flow because it flows like water at the lowest point. It also protects the underlying layers from erosion. So to the northeast, the Ash Creek has removed all the hills and here on the southeast, the Leverkan River has, or drainage has done the same thing. The basalt flow on top is the Pintura basalt uh, flow from the Pintura vent. It's about 10 miles up from here. It's roughly 850,000 years old. You might recognize some individual banding there. That might be individual flows or just pulses in from the same eruption. Moving to the right, you can see conglomerates, sandy, sandy deposits. So it's what's called a slow flowing stream meandering around, occasionally flooding deposits, making different types of de deposits over time. Now, interesting also, also the colorful banding on, on the bottom here. This is the Cretaceous Iron Spring Formation, dating between around 80 and 100 million years ago. The colors are generated by minerals, mainly iron oxides and hydroxides, and also manganese oxides. Rock here is slanted, as I indicated, because it's part of an anticline, a bulge, it has been uh, generated roughly 70 million years, 70 to 80 million years ago, part of the large virgin anticline. So let's have a look at these beautiful, colorful Cretaceous layers. Well, the diggers have done most of the work for us, actually all of the work here. I don't want to get too close to those layers because of soft, soft rocks here down here. You have a little Harder, looks like maybe more sandstone, sandstone here. We have mudstone in between. And you hear the little rocks falling down. You have some grayish sandstone over here. Again, pretty soft. You can probably you can break it off if the fingers here. No problem yet. So it's mostly mudstones, mudstone, sandstone. West Formation also has some uh, 
bentonitic clay, bentonite, which is clay derived from volcanic ash. But I haven't seen anything here, so no luck so far. Isn't it pretty, all those colors here? You see some little wavy lines there, colors pinching out, coming in. So this is also fluvial deposits. Or some, what looks like class a little bit up here as well. Yeah, so I don't have an exact age on the up alluvial deposits, uh, but maybe find some rocks in there which tells us at least a maximum age. The interesting is a layer up there. It looks like it's cracking. It has a crack in the middle. Maybe it's bentonite layer because if you dry up, they contract and if you get wet, they expand. If you look on the north side of the cut here, Again, layers, a little folding there. You see a little more folding and pinching here. That could be a westward folding event here. Well, here we got a large chunk of the conglomerate that came down. Let's look at some of the bigger stones or class in there, pebbles, river rocks. Let's see if you can determine what it is, maybe where it's coming from. Close up here, gives me already an idea. You have these igneous rocks, looks like porphyry. And that's typical rock you find up on Pine Valley Mountain. 22, 23 million year old rock in this conglomerate uh, tells me that this, this sediment has to be younger than 22 million years old. Here we have also a sample of the top layer. It's a kind of a grayish basalt, so it has maybe a little more quartz than the regular basalt. Maybe it's what's called an andesitic basalt. Okay, so let's say goodbye to this rock cut here and go a little further up where you see the same or similar formations again in another very nice colorful rock cut. And here we see some of the layers still in this rock cut, but a lot has changed. It's being covered up, graded back. Very little is left over. Well, it was nice while it lasted.